These are the four reasons to invest in gold and silver royalty companies. Hey everyone, thank you so much for watching Yankee Stacking. Kyle Floyd, the CEO of Vox Royalty, is going to join me shortly and give us four reasons to invest in gold royalties and not just in a miner. See, for me, gold and silver are all about wealth preservation with real money, generational wealth. If you're not stacking physical silver and gold, you're nuts, <laughs> okay? Do it, do it now. Now, I don't see these as incredible investment vehicles to build wealth. I've talked a lot about that in other videos. This is not a get rich quick strategy, people. No, to build wealth, I suggest you invest largely in other assets, especially real estate and other commodities. That's what I do. Um, I, I just inked a deal on an investment with a huge uh, apartment complex. I can actually go not too far away from where I live and touch it and see it and go inside. I like tangible assets, but I do a lot of other things with commodities too. And with my paper investments, and sometimes we're stuck with them, right? With them, I do invest some of it in the gold and silver mining sector. Why would I do that? Because I'm a risk taker? Absolutely not. If you watch my channel for any length of time, you know I am a conservative investor. And I'm also a contrarian investor. I believe the mining sector, gold and silver, uranium, whatever, it's grossly undervalued and it's starting a bull cycle. Three things. One, I am being compensated for this interview by Kyle. I'm being paid for the time and the effort it takes to produce this video. And I'm talking hours, people. But I'm not being paid to endorse his company. Mm -mm. I may or may not invest in Vox Royalty. I haven't decided yet. But no one buys my opinion. Second thing, I am not advocating investing a lot of your money in any mining company or any royalty company. No way. Uh -uh. I have a small uh, speculative model portfolio that I share with my viewers and will include in the description below this stuff and other less speculative assets constitute the vast majority of my wealth. Third, while I do provide one-on-one -on -one financial coaching to my Yankee Cannon members, I am not a professional financial advisor. You do you, people, okay? Don't just buy shares of a stock just because I highlight the company in a video. That's crazy, okay? So let's listen to Kyle and find out the four reasons to invest in gold and silver royalties. Hi, Kyle. Thanks for joining Yankee Stacking. Yankee, it's a pleasure to be with you. Why don't you just start out for those who don't know what a royalty company is. Tell us what that is. Absolutely. It's a top line revenue interest in the revenue generated by a mining asset. Royalties can take many shapes or forms. They're in different industries. It's not just on mining assets or even oil and gas assets. It's these are typical structures, but they really were born out of mining assets and how someone could get continued upside in an asset without actually owning the project and being the actual operator of the project. So what makes royalties so interesting is that uh, if you are interested in getting exposure to underlying commodities and underlying commodity price movements, royalties do that very efficiently for you. And so that is what a royalty company does. We go buy these interests all over the world uh, from disparate sellers uh, that don't run the mines, but they own these royalties. Are you almost like a bank? <laughs> uh, in, in, some way, in, in some ways, you know, we're creating a portfolio. Okay. And so we are finding these royalties all over the world, we're bringing them in and, and aggregating them and getting the value of having a portfolio which shelters a lot of the risk, uh, but, yield, but still yields tremendous upside. And so that's really the, you know, one of the key value drivers of our business for investors is exposure to commodities with less risk. Okay, give me the four reasons. What, just one right after the other. Why should we be investing in uh, royalty companies? Absolutely. Number one, royalty companies have outperformed the mining sector for the last two decades. So royalties are, are the place to be. Less downside risk. 
That's a lot of the reason for that. Mm. Better asset selection. We're finding the best assets that have the best royalties over them. And then we have organic growth. We have growth that continues to build in the portfolio over these assets that we don't pay another dollar for. Uh, so those are some of the key four okay. reasons of why you should own a precious metal royalty company. So the ability of a royalty to make money, is it as dependent on the price of gold and silver? Because we know that that fluctuates a lot. Absolutely fluctuates a lot. And one of the benefits of owning a royalty company is we are actually, while I personally am very bullish long-term metal prices and what's going to happen with, uh, with metal commodities. That being said, uh, for the benefit of our investors and in an effort to absolutely maximize returns for our shareholders, we actually price in lower metal prices uh, mm -hmm. into a forward price deck. So we can still make investors a lot of money, even with a metal price not going up and even going down. So that is a huge benefit to own royalty companies in that type of climate is we're getting um, a lot better risk adjusted return. You don't have to count on commodity prices going up. That being said, we obviously fundamentally believe that metal prices will go up. Oh, yeah. Personally believe that as well. And in that scenario, those are huge tailwinds and there's, there's leveraged benefit um, to our portfolio for our shareholders. We have a team of mining engineers and geologists that for the generalist investor that might not be a mining engineer or geologist or have invested in mining equities or mining related equities for the last 20 years, we're doing the hard work for you. And one of the things we're absolutely looking at is all on sustaining cost. We wanna find projects that can produce metal at, very, at much lower prices. And so they're going to stay in production. Uh, and so that's one of the things that we look for. And there's a lot of technical factors that go into truly understanding what an all in sustaining cost is and what we expect it to be. Because sometimes the mining companies, their expectations around their all in sustaining costs can be right, but they can also be wrong. And that's where our technical team of mining engineers and geologists does a lot of the hard work. And, and one of those factors that we focus on. You know, management team is so important to me. The team of geologists, when you say that, it's just, it's part of what I call the Yankee quadrant for important things you should check into before investing in a mining stock or even a royalty. And can you tell me a little bit more about the team you've assembled? Our chief investment officer is Spencer Cole. He's a mining engineer. He helped build and create a database that Vox has purchased over the last two years called Mineral Royalties Online. And that was a database of 8,000 proprietary royalties that Vox purchased and we used to selectively high grade the best assets that have royalties on them all over the world. Our EVP corporate development, Simon Cooper, he's a mining engineer and he's a geologist. He's worked at some of those interesting mining operations around the world from Australia uh, to Africa to Central Asia and brings a wealth of experience uh, that's very technically driven. And then Rian Easterhusen is in Perth, Australia for us. He's a renowned geologist. He's led Greenfields exploration campaigns for the who's who of majors and has been integrally uh, integral to the success of our business and finding great geology and great assets for us. Uh, and then we have a very good corporate team. Uh, Pascal Tard is our CFO and, and brings a lot of experience in terms of understanding the structure of royalties and obviously the accounting that goes into that. Uh, and then we have a general counsel as well. And because we do so much volume in terms of finding royalties and acquiring royalties, uh, we have a great team that we've built to be able to handle that workload uh, and do it very, very well. And there's a lot of costs to running a mine too, aren't there? Absolutely. And it's one of the reasons why royalty companies have outperformed is that in a rising commodity price environment, a lot of times you have rising inflation. And I think we find ourselves with that general macroeconomic backdrop right now. And what a royalty company offers to investors that I believe is much better than owning a mining company is that we're not exposed to all those cost pressures that a mining company is exposed to that are all affected by inflation. People, people's a big cost right. inflator that's happening right now. Uh, inputs, think about diesel, electricity, all of that is going up significantly. Infrastructure costs. So the same commodities that they're mining, they also need steel, they also need copper, um, you name it. Those are also going up in price. So right. mining companies obviously benefit from a rising commodity price, but they also feel the effects of rising inflation. So when you take Fox, we don't have that variable cost structure. Mm. We get 1% of the revenue. So we get all the upside, but we're not getting exposed to that downside cost, uh, which is highly significant for investors. And I think one of the main reasons royalty companies have outperformed. We went public in May of last year after being private for about seven years, patiently building the business. Uh, and so we forward split the stock in a two for one. So right now we have 39.5 million shares outstanding. We have no debt, we have about $8 million of working capital. Uh, and just a few warrants. So it is, I believe, a very, very good share structure. Management owns more than 15% of the company, the founding shareholders. And so, you know, we're very aligned with our shareholders. Mm -hmm. We are looking to maximize 
shareholder value. That's what drives us. That's why the business was created. It was purpose driven um, that we could solve the problem for investors, which was most people are not mining engineers and they're not geologists and they're not royalty experts. Um, so we put all of that together under one roof to create a business that uh, we believe could create the best commodity exposure for investors other than physical. One of the reasons you said was that it reduced risk. That's kind of what you're getting into with a speculative investment when you go into juniors, especially. But that risk can be mitigated because of your portfolio. And you've got an amazing portfolio of projects. I'm really excited about our portfolio. And it, and it makes a difference for investors uh, in terms of understanding what our portfolio offers you. So we're now at five producing assets. We expect that to be to, uh, close to 10 producing assets over the next 12 to 15 months. 10 producing assets or even five producing assets would have us in terms of a miner and, and the size of a mining company to have that type of diversification. You're probably looking at a company that's between $2 billion and maybe $10 billion in size. We're offering that level of diversification at a $100 million market cap, mm. but we still have immense upside. It's immense upside at lower risk. We have 55 royalties and streams, 20 of which are either in the development stage or very late stage exploration. We believe we have a portfolio that about 40% of the assets can be in production over the next few years. That's tremendous growth, much lower risk. And then there's continuing upside in these assets. We have projects that they're extending drilling. They're looking at underground scenarios in conjunction with their open pits. And we will see production that continues to expand, continues to grow, and we pay nothing for it. So it's diversification, but there's the upside is, is highly significant and we don't pay anything more for that upside. Can you speak to the jurisdictions that you uh, are investing in? Yeah, jurisdiction is really important. Uh, and you know the world is a complicated place. And so where you own royalties is, is a huge factor of what we believe will be long-term success of those royalty assets. And so about 70% of our portfolio is in Australia. And most of that being in Western Australia, which is ranked by the Fraser Institute as the best mining jurisdiction on the planet. And we would wholeheartedly agree uh, with that rating agency. And so that offers our investors a lot of safety with quality assets that are growing. And oh, by the way, gold in terms of Aussie dollar prices has been at all time highs for the last four years. And what that means for us is these mining companies have been so incentivized to keep growing their ounces in the ground and further develop their assets. And we as the royalty company benefit from that because we're not on the hook for any of those costs of drilling, any of those costs of development, but we get all that upside. What if one of the mines that are producing precious metals has an issue? How do you handle that? You know, it's it's one of the it's one of the beauties of the model uh, in that we're not in charge of handling it. That we, it's not that we don't share. It's not that we don't share some of the risk. You want a mine that can withstand lower prices and and also there therefore also probably withstand things going wrong and stay in production and be able to raise capital and keep producing. We're not on the hook. We don't operate these mines. We're not tasked with fixing the problems. That being said, if a mine does go out of production, let's say it goes into some form of restructuring, our royalty typically runs with the land, which means when the next operator comes in that's been recapitalized and restarts operations, while all of their shareholders and lenders might've been zeroed out, our royalty is typically still standing. So it's a much more secure position than one of those investment instruments. That's a great answer. Excellent. Thank you so much, Kyle. I have the uh, ticker symbol for Vox Royalty on the screen. Uh, over the counter, it's V-O-X-C-F. In Toronto, it's V-O-X. Is there a, a great way for us to get in touch with you, Kyle, if we're interested in investing? VoxRoyalty.com. That'll have uh, a ton of information that I think is very valuable. And then we're always happy to engage. We're on all the typical social media platforms. And then also uh, info or IR at VoxRoyalty.com. We're, uh, we're always excited to engage with our investors and provide more information. So really, uh, Yankee, appreciate the time on the program. Oh, Hopefully your goodness. audience has found it informative, um, but uh, grateful to be part of it. All right, there you have it. Four reasons why you need to check out royalty companies. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. And as always, I hope your day is a-okay.